bank runs are coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And the seeds of the next financial crisis are germinating as the Fed is now broke and banks are running out of cash. Let's go to Reuters where we picked today's story up with the headline, the Fed's net income turned negative in September, but it was no surprise. In a September 2021 meeting, top New York Fed staffer said, as expected, the Federal Reserve net income turned negative in September. The looming turn to technical losses has been noted in the minutes for the Fed's July policy meeting, meaning they've been warning everyone they're going broke. The U.S. Central Bank earns income from bonds it owns and from services it provides to the financial sector. After covering operational expenses, it hands over any extra earnings to the Treasury. So what I want you to understand here is the Fed does provide services to the banking industry and it charges for those services. But the Fed has a huge amount of overhead. And check this out. This is how they pay their bills. They go out and they buy bonds through quantitative easing, collect the interest that's paid by the American taxpayer on those bonds, uses that interest to fund its entire operations, and then any excess it has, it gives back to the Treasury. But now it isn't going to have that extra money. In fact, they're taking a loss in what is a pretty slick game of using taxpayer money to entirely fund their operation. In recent years, the money handed back to the Treasury was substantial as the Fed transferred back $109 billion last year, and then that was up from 80, almost $87 billion in the so-called remittances handed back in 2020. Now, with Fed pays, both, uh, pays financial firms to park cash on the Fed's books, and this is something that analysts have estimated that when the funds rate was somewhere in the 3 to 4% range, the money the Fed would need to pay out to maintain reverse repo and reverse balance rate would temp it in a negative income space. So on top of this, the Fed is actually paying banks and paying money market funds interest using, again, their balance sheet to accomplish this. Now, what does this look like? Well, let's take a look at this chart. This is the overnight reverse repo. And you hear many people talking about what this is, and it's very simple. This is $2.2 trillion that are being parked at the Fed on an overnight basis. This is literally entirely money market funds. So money markets are looking for a yield. The Fed is saying, hey, we'll pay you a very competitive above average rate if you park your money with us overnight. And that is what you're seeing here. So again, the Fed is using its balance sheet not only to fund its operations, but to pay banks interest and to pay taxpayers interest on their money market deposits. Now, one thing that people get wrong and don't understand is they say that rates could not go back down. Now, what you see in this reverse repo as our chief strategist Jeff Snyder talks about is a collateral shortage, being there is not enough treasury bills in the market. And he's right about that. And so to alleviate that problem, what the Fed is doing here is continuing to raise rates and raising the rate it charges on overnight reverse repo. And what that has the effect of is raising short-term interest rates. Now imagine this, imagine we have a financial crisis that starts tomorrow and the Fed all of a sudden drops its interest rate on the funds rate back to zero. Well, what it's going to do at the same time is drop the rate on this overnight reverse repo back to zero. What you have is $2.2 trillion that will immediately go hitting the treasury bill market looking for yield. And guess what? it will take the T-bill rate negative, take the front end of the curve negative, the intermediate curve back to zero, and the long end of the curve all the way back to zero, which is something a lot of people don't understand just how fast that can happen. Fed officials have repeatedly stressed that the central bank negative income is not like a conventional bank losing money. The Fed addresses negative income via what is called a deferred asset, which is an accounting measure that the central bank would then seek to cover when it begins turning a profit again. As of the most recent data, the size of this deferred asset stands at now $2.9 billion, which is really paltry considering the size of our financial system that is measured in trillions. Having net income doesn't impede the monetary policy we're doing, but I think it poses a communication problem. As I've said, this is a political issue. As Fed watchers have said, the biggest risk to the central bank from negative income situation is political. Profits handed over to the Treasury have been a source of a deficit reduction for one thing, and some elected officials may wonder at a time when the Fed has acknowledged its rate hike campaign will put some Americans out of work, well, a lot, and cause economic pain, a substantial amount. It's paying banks and money funds, many of them foreign, just to park cash on the sidelines. And so what you can see is the Fed is already in their heat for doing 
doing this quantitative easing. They're taking the blame for inflation. And this means Congress, next time the Fed goes to meet with them, is going to have a lot of issues here about this deferred asset. Now, one thing that shouldn't turn into a deferred asset when the next financial crisis is, is your portfolio. I'll put a link up here to Portfolio Shield and description below because the situation with the Fed is not getting any better. The Fed is now paying $500 million to a handful of banks every day and suddenly has a big problem. This headline from Zero Hedge, who knows that the total daily interest payments on reserves and reverse repo is skyrocketing. Again, $500 million a day of the Fed cycling taxpayer money back to taxpayers and banks. And here you can see those remittances that we talked about moments ago are now going negative with Congress enjoying the money the Fed gives them. But all of a sudden, I think the Congress's tune is going to change when all of a sudden they have to start paying the Fed. As Zero Hedge continues on their article, Morgan Stanley Carpenter explains what happens next is that remittances to the Treasury end and the Treasury has to issue more debt to offset the Fed revenue. The Fed accumulates its losses and rather than reducing its capital, creates a deferred asset. When earnings turn positive again, remittances will stay at zero until the losses are recouped, and this being what the Fed would have 100% tax rate to offset its current losses and future income. Profitability will eventually return because the currency base will grow and lowering interest expense while QT, at least some hope, will shrink interest-bearing liabilities. So the Fed at the moment is saying this really isn't a big deal, but it really is because it's causing a massive lack of confidence in the system. And here you can see this from the recent University of Michigan preliminary survey in terms of percent less confidence in the Federal Reserve by political affiliation, we can see that Republicans have almost no confidence in the Fed, followed by independents and Democrats falling far behind on their confidence, still holding some. But I'll just say, when the next financial crisis is, you'll see that confidence across the board tank. Now, what do you think? Are you confident in the Federal Reserve, their ability to navigate things and do their job? Well, I'll let you weigh in the comments and we'll see. I have a hunch I know what you're probably going to say. With the usual assumption that a high level of confidence in the Fed would be associated with more favorable prospects for the national economy, consumer views suggest there may be headwinds that may dampen the outlook for the economy. And that's a great point because we talked about this in yesterday's show when we talked about retail sales, its correlation to the stock market. And all this is saying is that people aren't confident in the Fed and their means are not confident in the future. And that means spending will go down. And of course, as we just talked about, this deferred asset that the Fed has to issue may mean more Treasury debt at a time when liquidity in the Treasury is having a huge problem. But to that, we turn to the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. And she worries over the loss of adequate liquidity in Treasuries, as she notes a surge in supply of them at a time that she thinks that the standing repo facility could help, and she's right. We are worried about a loss of adequate liquidity in the market, which is no surprise. The balance sheet capacity of broker dealers to engage in treasuries market making hasn't expanded month, while the overall supply of treasuries has climbed. The treasury debt outstanding has climbed by about $7 trillion since the end of 2019, but big financial institutions haven't been as willing to serve as market makers, burdened by so-called supplementary leverage ratio, or SLR, which requires that capital be put against such activity, as well as reserve holdings. So it's possible we can actually see at some point the Federal Reserve ease some of these regulatory restrictions to allow the commercial banks to be more of what they should be doing is providing market maker services in the treasury space. Yellen noted that the Federal Reserve now has a standing repurchase facility to provide a liquidity backstop to the Treasury market that can be helpful, she said. She also said the so-called Group of 30 panels presented some good ideas on reforms that would help strengthen the market, including possible expansion of central clearing. And so what I think you could see happen here, which is pretty interesting, is Yellen is saying, hey, we have a problem of liquidity in the note and bond space. There isn't a problem of liquidity in the bill space because there's a short of T-bills, but there is a problem in the note and bond space, particularly on what they call on the run or already previously issued treasuries. So one thing that she could do as a treasury secretary is go out and issue more T-bills 
buy back some of these old notes and bonds, pull them off the market. And she could do that not by calling the debt, by just going out in the secondary market and buying it, then turn to Powell and say, look, you stop backstopping this overnight reverse repo, drop that rate down to zero, and I'll provide all the T-bills for that whole market. And we'll all of a sudden, we'll bring liquidity back to the space. Seems like a good idea, but knowing policymakers, they won't be able to pull it off before the next crisis hits. Because Q the dollar squeeze, here you see banks are running out of money as the Fed says a record $6.3 billion to Switzerland via the swap line. So now we have a dollar shortage that the Fed has to print. Recall that three weeks ago after the first panic pivot by the Bank of England when global markets were in free fall, we said that the markets desperately needed some words of encouragement. The Fed has to make some preemptive announcement on the U.S. dollar currency swap lines, if only to reassure global markets amid this historic U.S. dollar short squeeze that at least someone and will print, can and will print as many dollars as needed to avoid a systemic collapse. And so here you can see we are so close. We're on the verge of this. And the Swiss National Bank is the first to be, of course, having a problem. They're short dollars, meaning their customers are short dollars, and they're going to the Fed for short-term loans. Check this out. Here you see a seven-day loan at an interest rate of 3.3%, which is pretty high for six, almost $6.3 billion. The question is, who short those dollars and why are they so desperate to pay? Well, you can start to see that at some point, those bank runs will be coming. Today, none other than Bob Michelle, the outspoken chief Ex investment officer of JP Morgan Asset Management, told everyone they were right. As paraphrased by Bloomberg, he said, the relentless dollar could forge a path to the next market upheaval. And of course, we can note that in the past, when you see big moves in the dollar, which we now can validate and confirm, not just from the research of our chief strategist, Jeff Snyder, but by the actions of the Fed, loaning money in a short-term basis to the Swiss National Bank, that we are indeed in a global dollar shortage. When this happens in past history, it's marked on the charts by the word crisis. And with that, I'm Steve Ann Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.